Hey guys, it's Glassboxed here and welcome to my second video on Git. In this video, we're going to go ahead and look at how to create a fresh project and get Git to actually start using it. So before we do that, I want to just go over a couple of commands just to make life a little bit easy. So from the previous video, remember when we ran these commands we actually had you know a lot of input here and input there we even uh, made mistakes at some point you know that's all fine one quick command i want to you guys to learn about is called the clear command the clear command once typed in basically clears all the text on your screen and to run that command it's quite simply clear enter so that's what the clear command does. If you type in clear and then enter, it just clears all your command. The second command I want you guys to learn about is the history command, uh, which in this case, I want you to invoke by pressing the up and down arrow keys. So remember when we ran all those git config commands like so, and then we type in list and so on. If you press up and down on your keyboard, it will historically go through the commands that you last typed, making it a little bit easier to go back to a command that you typed sometime in the past. Anyway, let's move on with this video. And as of when we touch a new command that we haven't covered yet, I'll go through it. So the first thing I want to cover is creating a brand new project and then getting Git, identify it as a brand new project. So how do I do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. The first thing I'll do is I'll just go to my desktop. And on my desktop, I will make a brand new folder. And I will call it git project. And go into that. So at the moment, this is a empty project. And at the moment, git does not know anything about this whatsoever. So the first thing I want to do is navigate to this folder. So how can I do that from the git bash window? So the first thing I want to do is find out the current directory that I'm in. And to do that, I want to print the working directory, pwd. So what pwd does is it prints the working directory. And it's currently telling me that this is the directory that I'm currently in. So I know that my git project folder is in desktop. So how do I get from here to my desktop and then into this folder? So to do that, I can use a command called ls. What ls does is it lists the current folders and files which are in your current directory. For instance, typing in pwd tells me that this is the current directory that I'm in, or to be more specific, this is where I am currently in so assuming that i'm in this directory at the moment if i now type in ls ls stands for list ls means list so i know that i need to get to my desktop and we can actually see here that desktop happens to be in this directory how do i go from this directory into this directory or in other words how do i navigate from one directory to the next, assuming the, navigate, the directory that I want to navigate to is inside my current working directory. To do that, we type in change directory, i.e. cd. So if I say cd and then the name of the directory, which in this case is desktop, and hit enter, it now tells me that I am in desktop. So if I now say pwd, I can now see that it's telling me this is now the current directory that I'm in. Before I do that, let me explain this really quickly. What is this? This is called the tilde. But what does this actually mean from a Git perspective? Git assumes or it showcases tilde as your root directory, as your user directory. So if I say something like cd space and then tilde and hit enter, this shows also the current directory that I'm in which in this case, if I say PWT, happens to be my 
root directory or user directory. So again, I want to go back to desktop, right? So if I just say desktop and enter, I am now in desktop. One quick shortcut to note is the use of the tab key. If, I, if you actually hit a tab whilst in the middle of navigating to a directory, so for instance, if I go back to home again, if I say CD and just say desk and hit the tab button, this will automatically auto complete the directory that I'm going, trying to go to. Great. So now I'm in my desktop directory and we've learned about change directory, we've learned about print working directory, and we've also learned about the root and ls. The next thing I want to do is actually go back a directory. So how can I go back from desktop and to this wmuddinm directory? How do I go back? Well, it's quite simple. All you do is change directory space and then just say uh, period period. If I hit enter, this goes back a directory. Now, I don't even have to type in pwd because this tells me automatically. Anyway, let's move on. So I want to actually go to desktop and from desktop, I want to go to Git project. Great. So if I now do PWD, I can now see that I'm in the project. But Git still doesn't recognize this as a Git project, not yet anyway. So how do we do that? How, would, how do we tell Git that, hey Git, this is a project. This, you know, this folder will eventually, at some point in time, contain files that I want you to help keep track of. How do we do that? To do that, all you do is you run a really simple command called git init. Init is shorthand for initialization. So if we now run this, notice it's saying that it's initialized an empty git repository in to this particular drive, or rather this particular directory. So before we go any forward, what does this actually mean? In simple terms, what it means is when we were originally in that directory, Git had absolutely no knowledge of that directory in terms of whether it is a Git project or not. All it knew was it's a directory, it's a folder like any other folder on your hard drive. When we ran this particular command, so this particular command being shorthand for initialization, it basically initialized that particular folder as a Git repository. Now what is a repository? A repository is essentially a way of saying a location or a source. It doesn't mean exactly the same thing as a folder but the definition of a repository is on par of a folder. It means or rather it identifies the source or location of a Git project. So in layman terms a repository is a Git project or the location or the pinpoint location of a Git project. Going forward, also notice this. We're still in the same directory, but after running this command, this directory has changed from tilde desktop git project to tilde desktop git project brackets master. Now we'll talk about this in more details in a future video, but when we are in a folder that is recognized as a Git project, Git also prints some additional information about that project. In this case, it's calling this particular folder a master folder or a master Git repository. We'll go into more detail what this means, but to keep it very simple, when we initialize a Git project for the first time, it creates branches. We'll talk about branches later on, but branches are basically versions of your files. In this case, we happen to be on a master branch. A master branch is the is treated as the parent branch of everything. It is the absolute branch of everything for any given Git project. Now, one other thing I want to show you is this. If we do a list, currently it says there's you know there's nothing in the file, right? There's 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 nothing in there. For instance, when we did list for our root directory it gave us all of this stuff but in our current git project when we do a list it says there's nothing there which is true there is there is absolutely nothing there however if we do ls minus a then notice that it's actually showing a few things that aren't there now what does a mean minus 
is a way of passing in parameters or options. And A in this case means all. All includes hidden files. So when we type in ls space dash A, we are basically saying list all the files in this directory. And these just happen to be some hidden files in this directory. Now we can't see them, but when we run this command through git bash, we can see them. What are these files? These files basically contain the makeup of your Git project. Now, I don't know how strongly I can advise this. Don't mess around with these files. No, don't change anything in these files. Only change stuff if you really know what you're doing. Going forward, perhaps I can do a video on this as well. But for now, the main thing you need to know from this is these files contain the makeup, the structure, the hierarchy of your Git project. If you change these files, there is a good probability you will break your project. So don't change these files. Anyway, guys, in this video, we've covered how to create a fresh Git project and to initialize it. In the next video, we're actually going to start using Git to actually start making changes to files and so on. Thanks a lot for watching. Ciao. Hi guys, it's Glassbox here and I really appreciate you guys watching my video and if you've liked it then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also follow me on Twitter and Google, links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.